Hello, Captains, and welcome to the latest edition of the Waterline. Greetings, Commanders. In this episode of Waterline, we will tell you about World of Warships development plans for the summer and autumn of 2023. Disclaimer. No maritime fauna, whales, birds, or dolphins were hurt in the making of this video. Spanish cruisers, the first full branch for this nation in the game, appeared in testing in update 12.4. This summer, our access to this branch will begin. In the summer, new superships will be added to the tech tree. British battleship Devastation and Soviet supercruiser Novosibirsk. These two ships represent a continuation of the gameplay style of Conqueror and Petropavlos, respectively. In future updates, we will introduce strategic operations, a new type of mechanic that will be used in various events. Each player participates in strategic operations individually, with no competition with other players. Visually, strategic operations represents a virtual battle map divided into areas. The player chooses one of the areas, after which they begin to earn capture points for completing combat missions. Once an area is captured, the player receives a reward and can move on to capturing other nearby areas. Areas will differ in composition and difficulty of combat missions, as well as rewards. Construction of the Tier 10 Pan-Asian destroyer Lucian at the Taiku dockyard will begin in the summer. Lucian is armed with four 130mm main battery guns, which due to their flat ballistics allow for easy long-range firing, but do not have high damage per minute. Unlike researchable Pan-Asian destroyers, she is equipped with standard torpedoes located in two five-tube torpedo launchers. They feature a large number of torpedoes per salvo, but a low range. The ship can also boast good concealment. In spite of her lacking engine boost, her arsenal of consumables is still pretty decent. It is made up of hydroacoustic surge, smoke generator with short smoke screen dispersion time, and torpedo reload booster in different slots. As we shared in a previous waterline, we plan to bring back the aircraft carriers that were removed from the game in update 8.0, but with a distinct gameplay concept and new mechanics for their squadrons. The first mechanic is minefields. A player controlling these planes can place a minefield in a certain area on the map. Enemy ships and submarines take damage when they come in contact with mines and the mines explode. The second mechanic is airborne smoke generator. It creates a smoke screen behind the planes as they fly. The smoke screen can be quite long, but will quickly disperse. In one of the summer updates, we will introduce a special temporary battle type where players will be able to try out these mechanics on analogs of the already existing aircraft carriers in the game. Based on the results, we will analyze how we can bring these new mechanics with new aircraft carriers. We continue to improve the visual and sound components of the game. In the near future, we plan to make the following changes. New inhabitants will appear on the maps. Birds, underwater fauna, and the cherry on top, dolphins that can accompany your ship. Three maps will receive new detailed textures, and there will also be improvements to some visual effects like water, shell hits, and shadows. Animations for the unfolding of antennas and funnels on aircraft carriers will be added, as well as animations for funnels of French battleship. The quality of most of the sound effects in the game will be improved. As we mentioned in the previous waterline, we plan to improve the equipment section in the port. We will add a system of upgrade recommendation for each ship, similar to the commander's skills window. At the end of the summer, we plan to update the insignia menu. In addition to the ready-made patches and emblems, there will be a new tab with the patch designer. This will allow players to create their own insignia by combining different pre-existing elements such as symbol, shape of the patch and color of the edges, as well as customize the background color and select the texture. In addition, the rendering technology will be improved. The patches, including the existing ones, will look more realistic. Warship Strike activity, based on a classical battleship game, will return to World of Warships. There will be changes to the rewards, as well as to the ways of obtaining strike passes required to participate in the warship strike. As was said in the previous waterline, we plan to update the appearance of the settings menu and improve its usability. Operations will be added to the conditions of almost all combat missions. A special coefficient will be added for missions with those metrics that are easier to achieve in this battle type, such as damage 
or particular ribbons, so that the difficulty of completing such missions in operations compared to other battle types is at a comparable level. This summer will improve the Twitch drop experience for all viewers. Players will be able to receive their drops instantly in the game after claiming them on Twitch, removing the need to re-log into the game client if it's already running. Hello, welcome to our temporary office in Belgrade. Why temporary? Because as we speak, Wargaming is putting together a new modern office equipped with everything we need to work hard and play harder. We'll definitely show it off to you, but not yet. In the meantime, we're here in the area of New Belgrade, and we're a bit crowded together. Here we have the World of Warships team, the Legends team, and even the tanks. And also some announced projects, but we're not ready to talk about them yet. And we're already more than 500 people. By the way, here are two views that you see in most of our videos. Here we have the best one, both a beautiful wall and an even more beautiful art department. And we also shoot sometimes here in the kitchen, with this beautiful wall behind me, some apples and oranges, and this noisy coffee machine. In the new office, we'll have a dedicated filming studio, which means we will stop distracting these guys from working on their ships, and we'll be able to produce the same quality videos as we did in the past. And besides, we'll be able to diversify the quantity and quality of the videos produced. While we're on the topic, why don't you write in the comments section what kind of videos you would like to see on our official channel going forward? Well, our tour is over, but in the meantime, I will leave you with our general manager to tell you more about our future office. Hello, everyone. We are standing here in front of when listening the cars. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We are standing here in front of our future Wargaming office in Belgrade. In just several months, this brand new cozy office will become a home of World of Warships team. More than 500 of our colleagues will do the full scope of game development, including 2D art, 3D art, programming, design, sound, sound studios, and all the other things that building legendary games consists of. Starting six months ago, we grew to more than 500 people and became the biggest game studio in Serbia. Understanding that there is a lot of interest for our company from Serbia, with hundreds of people interested in our company on LinkedIn and other networks, we are more than happy to welcome you to visit us here, meet us and maybe start working with us. Welcome, guys. Early access to a branch of Soviet submarines will begin in the autumn. Their current gameplay concept gears them toward countering other submarines. Their acoustic torpedoes have low damage but good range and speed, and their standard torpedoes have high damage and range. Moreover, all submarines in the branch have player-controlled main battery guns. In mid-autumn, a second branch of Japanese battleships will appear in the game. It will consist of tier 8 to 10 ships that we have already announced in the development blog. But in short, these will be battle cruisers with accurate and long-range Japanese guns with calibers ranging from 410 mm at tier 8 to 457 mm at tiers 9 and 10. These ships will have good concealment but not the greatest survivability. This early access will also feature the winning design of Yumihari Camouflage Contest in the form of a permanent camouflage for this new Tier 8 Japanese battleship. We want to thank all of you who participated in creating these fantastic designs. This autumn, the game will feature two new super ships, Italian cruiser Piemonte and American battleship Maine. They will inherit the gameplay styles of Venezia and Montana respectively. Also this autumn, players can expect the traditional activities of the season. Our favorite game will turn 8 years old, and we will prepare a retro-style special event, a lot of rewards and new content, including a new collection. We also want to thank those who took part in the voting to select the ship for which we created the themed permanent retro camouflage. And of course, the most stylish event, Black Friday. What could be better than to stand on the helm of a luxurious black ship and sink the enemy? Do it with the backdrop of an epic song. My favorite is ACDC's Black in Black. As for what ships will be added to the Black Fleet this year, stay tuned. Till then, try and guess in the comment section below which ships will appear this Black Friday. As we announced in the previous issue of Waterline, we considered Airship Escort as one of the candidates to be added to random battles on a permanent basis. 
The last iteration of Airship Escort was perceived quite well, so this autumn we will be adding Airship Escort to random battles as a permanent mod after some polishing and tweaking. This year, for Halloween, we plan to prepare a new nightmare operation, which will be the final chapter in the confrontation between Intanian forces and the ships of the Twilight Fleet. There will be a couple of interesting new mechanics as well, but more details on that later. Remember the animated commanders that first appeared in Troubles in the Hot Tub event? As we saw, players appreciated them, and so did we. We are happy to announce that we are currently working on improving the animated commanders feature and we plan to introduce such commanders in our game in future updates. That's all for now. Good luck on the 7 Seas. Stay tuned.